Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you've ever felt entirely inundated and directionless trying to review all the literature in your field, you're not alone. But there is a better way using a systematic approach to literature reviews. Unlike a traditional literature review, where you search randomly in databases, a systematic one requires creating an intentional, documented protocol for identifying and screening sources. The time savings and insights gained from this initial effort are substantial. In this video, I'll walk through what exactly a systematic literature review is and how creating that review protocol and executing the systematic review transform your research abilities. Let's finally overcome the deluge of information. So, what exactly is a systematic literature review? Well, it's a super organized process that dives deep into all the research on a specific topic. B is to find, analyze, and summarize every little piece of evidence that's relevant to a stated question. To make things stay fair and square, the review protocol fancy word for guidelines sets really clear rules about which studies to include and which ones to exclude. These rules are all spelled out in black and white, so there's no room for bias or cherry picking the studies that support a viewpoint. Here are some key benefits of a systematic review. First, it is comprehensive. It captures all relevant studies to fully understand the current state of the research topic and finds all relevant studies, not just a few easy to locate ones, to give a complete picture. Second, it is unbiased. The predefined protocols or predefined rules reduce the likelihood of cherry picking data to fit a narrative. Follows evidence objectively. Third, it is reproducible. A documented process allows replication if the review is updated, which lets you repeat the review and verify the findings. Fourth, it is credible. It is considered the gold standard due to rigorous, transparent methods. Trustworthy. Finally, it is impactful. The statistical meta-analysis of combined data reveals new effects. Combining data statistically reveals effects not visible in individual studies. Powerful findings. To sum up, the main advantage of this approach is that it helps you see things more clearly. Examining the entirety of the data allows you to identify patterns, trends, and fresh perspectives that you might have overlooked when focusing only on a limited number of studies. So, if you are interested in digging deep and getting the full scoop on a particular topic, a systematic literature review is the way to go. So, if you're diving into the world of systematic reviews, creating a protocol is an essential step. But what exactly is a protocol, and what elements should it include? Let's break it down in simpler terms. Firstly, your protocol needs to clearly state your research question and objectives. This means defining what you want to investigate and what you hope to achieve with your review. 2. Identify keywords and form search terms. After defining your question and objectives, carefully identify key concepts or variables in your research topic. Brainstorm all the relevant keywords and synonyms. You'll use these to develop targeted search terms and strings to scan databases for pertinent studies efficiently. Try combining keywords using Boolean operators like and and or. Test your search strategy in a few databases and iterate to maximize finding studies aligned with your review scope without becoming too broad. Consulting a research librarian can help optimize your planned search approach. Next, you have to specify some criteria for selecting the relevant studies. We're talking about inclusion and exclusion criteria here. In other words, what factors will determine whether a study makes the cut or not? Think about things like the publication timeframe, languages, sample size, methodology, and keywords. These criteria will help ensure that you only include the most relevant and reliable studies in your review. For example, you could limit your review to randomized control trials published in English over the past five years with at least 50 participants or specify that studies must examine a treatment effect in school-aged children in North America. Consulting with advisors and experts is recommended when developing your protocol. And use my research notebook templates on how to write a research paper, literature searching and recording templates. I put the link in the description section below. 
Once you've got that covered, it's time to decide which databases or sources you'll search. These would be the places where you'll find the studies that meet your criteria. Some key databases to consider are PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, PSYC Info, CINAHL, Cochrane Library, Science Direct, JSTOR, ProQuest Dissertation Species, Social Science Research Network SSRN, Education Resources Information Center ERIC. Also include relevant organizational websites, conference proceedings, preprint servers, clinical trial registries, and custom Google Scholar searches. Make a comprehensive list of these sources to save your time and ensure you don't miss important literature later. 5. Outlining the screening process. Now comes the screening process. This step involves checking the studies you've found and determining which ones are the most relevant to your research question. You'll need to come up with a clear plan for this how will you decide which studies make the final cut? Will you involve multiple reviewers to ensure objectivity? Make sure you outline this screening process in your protocol. 6. Describing data extraction methods. Once you have identified the studies you want to include, it's time to extract the necessary data. This means going through each study and collecting the relevant information. It's essential to describe the methods you'll use for this process in your protocol. How will you ensure consistency and accuracy in extracting the data? Be clear about your approach. 7. Documenting each step of the review methodology. Last but not least, make sure you document every single step of your review methodology. This is crucial as it adds transparency and credibility to your work. By keeping a record of everything you do, you'll make it easier for others to reproduce your review and verify your findings. As I mentioned before, it's always wise to consult consultants and experts when developing a protocol. They can provide valuable insights and help you resolve potential issues in your research design. Also, I recommend using my research notebook template on how to write a research paper, literature search and documentation template. I've put the link in the description section below. Remember, creating an effective and well-defined protocol is the foundation of a strong systematic review. So take your time, be thorough, and consult with others to ensure you're on the right track. Once your protocol is set, you can proceed through the following six steps to execute the systematic review. 1. Executing searches using your defined strategy. 2. Importing results into reference software like EndNote. 3. Screening titles abstracts based on criteria. 4. Assessing full texts of remaining studies. 5. Extracting key data and assessing study quality. And 6. Analyzing synthesizing evidence to reach conclusions. 1. Conducting searches. The first step is executing searches based on your predetermined strategy. Think of it as casting a wide net to capture relevant studies related to your research question. 2. Organizing with reference software. Once you've found these studies, it's time to organize them systematically. A helpful tool for this is reference software like EndNote. It allows you to import and manage the data from your findings effectively. 3. Screening the titles and abstracts. After organizing your studies, you'll start to screen the titles and abstracts based on specific criteria. This step facilitates your rapid assessment of whether the studies should be included in your research question or rejected. 4. Assessing full texts. Once you've narrowed down your selection, it's time to dig deeper. You'll carefully assess the full texts of the remaining studies to ensure they meet your predetermined criteria. 5. Extracting key information and evaluating study quality. In this step, you'll extract essential data from the selected studies. This includes the main findings, sample sizes, methodologies, and more. Additionally, you'll evaluate the overall quality of each study to assess its reliability. 6. To analyzing synthesizing evidence to reach conclusions. The final and most crucial phase is to analyze all the studies that meet your criteria and synthesize the evidence to reach conclusions. This involves carefully evaluating the data extracted from each study, assessing for heterogeneity in results across the literature, performing meta-analysis if appropriate, 
considering biases and study quality, comparing findings to existing theories and knowledge, integrating results into a coherent summary, determining certainty of evidence, and presenting implications for practice and future research. Maintaining objectivity to allow the evidence to speak for itself is crucial during this analytic process. If you want step-by-step -step guidance on planning and conducting a systematic literature review and saving time, please check out my research notebooks, such as the How to Write a Research Paper, template for academic search record, link below. It provides practical templates and instructions for planning your search strategy, searching databases and sources, follow-up tracking, managing references, summarizing sources, and more. With these templates, you'll have the perfect system to organize and execute your systematic literature review. No more feeling lost in a sea of sources. So, head to the link below to grab my literature review notebook and start your review off right. Then, dive deep into sources, I promise you'll uncover powerful insights. Now, it's time for systematic reviews to shine a light. I hope this overview got you excited about the superpowers of systematic reviews. Implementing a rigorous predefined protocol takes your research skills to the next level. No more aimless searching or missing key evidence. Just laser-focused investigation yielding definitive insights. Now, I want to hear from you, question 1. Have you used a systematic review approach before? If yes, how did it impact your investigation? Question 2. What challenges do you face in reviewing literature comprehensively? Question 3. What criteria would you use to screen sources for your thesis or dissertation? Question 4. What databases or search tools do you rely on the most? Question 5. How could a systematic review benefit your current or future projects? Let me know in the comments and check out my related videos for more literature reviews and research tips. Let me know if you have any other questions on mastering systematic reviews. And don't forget to check the description below. If you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel for more research and writing knowledge. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.